Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to That Handy Friend. Today, we're back in the garage, and as you can see, we have a neglected go-kart in front of us. This is one that I built last summer to play around with learning how to weld. Completely built this thing from scratch. No plans, nothing, just kinda winged it. And one of the big problems was the wheels I chose and the steering setup. This thing has really bad steering for a go-kart. So in this video, I would like to go ahead and get a new wheel on this thing and then play around with some of the steering geometry and see if I can't get this to turn better. So let's get started. We're gonna go buy another wheel like that one, not like this one. Let's go. Just like that. We got two wheels on here now. As you can see, I already tried fixing this a little bit once. These arms used to be uh, straight out parallel, whatever. And you can see now I have them angled forward. I guess that didn't buy me anything now that I look at it. Cause I'm not hitting this and I wouldn't have been hitting it cause it wasn't that aggressive. I think my issue, my biggest issue has to do with this setup here, the way that these are. And I'm assuming that the bigger this arc is, so if you think about this like a wheel that spins, the bigger that is, the more it's going to push these rods in either direction. And likewise, the longer that this lever is, the more it's also going to push these so when I have this lever out far, sorry, I had that backwards. When I have this lever out far, it takes a lot of the travel out. So I think if I move these inward a little bit, drill some new holes, I might be able to get a little bit more turn out of these. So this is what my simple monkey brain came up with as far as measuring the alignment of this. I taped a stick onto the wheel to get the wheels plane. I put a piece of metal down here so there's just a tiny, tiny gap that you can see if you sight down the side of the stick, and then I just tried to make the wheel as straight as possible. Then I have a digital angle finder here, so what I can do is I can turn the wheel to full lock. Take out my little handy dandy digital angle finder here. Loosen it up. And then try to eyeball this the best that I can. I'm already moving my stick. This is not going as well as I'd hoped. But measuring from the outside of that piece of metal, that looks like that's a pretty, pretty close, or like 23 degrees that way. Now if we turn it the other way, let's see what we get. It's like 24. 23, 24 degrees, I'm not, I'm not gonna get more accurate than that with this measuring system, but I'm gonna do the other one real quick. All right, disconnected. As you can see, I cut these arches 
thinking these wheels are going to turn a heck of a lot more than they do. But I mean, realistically, like that's where the hard stop is on the inside of this arm here. That's way more. That's like a 45 degree angle. That's, that's like twice what I have right now. So let's see if we can't get a little closer to that. Probably would have been smart to try and measure off of this. I'm going to take these spindles off and bring them inside to drill them because I need to hold them steady. Alright, now we're getting steering lock. Not bad. Let's put the wheels on and see what it looks like. All right, so right off the bat, you can see we're gonna have to do a little bit of tie rod adjustment. And I expected to have to do that. I've got plenty of threads in either direction. These um, heim joints are all the way threaded on right now, so I can back them off. It looks like I need to extend them quite a bit though. So I'm gonna start on this side, I'll pull this one out a little bit, then I'll pull this one out, then this one out, and then this one out to try and make up that whole difference. For demonstration purposes, I disconnected this middle one here. So I have this wheel straightened out, and this wheel straightened out, and you can see that I need to make up that much of a difference. So it's like a quarter of an inch, maybe. So it's really not even that much. I thought it was gonna be a little bit more like half an inch, but I'm just gonna take it out of this one right here and we'll see how it looks. All right, so just for testing's sake, uh, let's try and straighten that out again. Oops. This wheel's straight, this wheel's a little cockeyed. I am gonna test it like that. No, I'm not. I'm gonna take a little bit out of this one now, and then I'm gonna test it. All right, so you can see now I got them both kind of aligned. They're not perfect, and they never will be. And in case you haven't noticed on this channel, I don't do anything perfect, but I had to take about another quarter inch out of this one. This nut is where it was sitting. So I was kind of semi-correct in the beginning when I said I was gonna need about a half an inch out of there, so. This one, I'm just going to tighten it up real quick. All right, that's tight enough. I'll tinker with it a little bit later. But now let's see what our turning looks like. It's exactly the same. We're not hitting our stops anymore. Something is going on here. In fact, it almost looks like less turn. What the... Rick is up with that. Hmm. I do not understand what's happening here. I thought for sure that was gonna do something for me, but it honestly looks exactly the same. I just disconnected one of these to see what would happen. And you can see it moves pretty well over there. I can move it any direction. And I was wondering if maybe there was some sort of tension that was being created by the turning. But you can see even with one ball joint, or one, one wheel connected. I'm not getting any turn. And then I look down here and you can see, see how these heim joints have these shoulders on them? If you look down here, you can see it's contacting the bottom of that arm. So I think I'm gonna need to put like a spacer or something between the joint and the arm to get that to not contact. So let me see what I can find for that. I was able to find a couple of jam nuts and some 3 8 washers, so hopefully this will give me enough, enough height to clear that. Yeah, three's too much. Let's go down to two. Two's looking pretty good. That's much better. That turning angle's pretty dang good too. Let's do the other one. Have a look at that. That is way more steering angle than I was getting before. It's not quite hitting yet, but that's still really good. I am thrilled with that. 
Let me put the washer on this one and then we'll, uh, we'll test it out. Well, you were along for part of that ride, and although the steering angle's a lot better, this thing drives so much worse. Oh my God, it's wicked twitchy, super hard to turn the steering wheel once it gets locked. And then when I am turning, it did this before, but it does it still. I don't know if you saw it all, but the wheels scrub, they push outwards. So I'm gonna have to figure out what I can do about that because I think that's probably I'm gonna go back to those original holes and then I need to figure out what's going on with that scrubbing because I think that's a lot of my problem too. I just went inside and did a little bit of Googling around to see what I could do to improve my, uh, I always get this wrong, improve my understeer. I don't know, whichever one pushes through a corner. Oversteer is, yeah, it's understeer. I need to improve my understeer. So a lot of what they said, the first thing to do is increase your track width and I already have the spacers in here. I already tried that a while ago. Those little nylon spacers. I was hoping that that would take care of it. That didn't do it. Um, the next thing that a lot of the forums I was reading say is increase camber and increase caster. Now I don't really have those adjustments on this cart. I would have to cut those off right there and then I would have to manually cut this angle to be the same on both sides and then weld it back on for this setup and I just don't think I'm going to get that ever good enough to where it will work well. Um, <clears throat> it also they recommended increasing nose weight which yeah there is literally no weight in the nose of this thing. It might weigh 50 pounds. And then decreasing the, the front ride height, which I've also done. As you can see, I have these smaller wheels on here right now compared to these wheels. So I'm kind of at a loss. I am going to move these bolts back up to the front because another thing that I thought was Oh, I bet you the reason why these weren't working before was because they were hitting on my uh, heim joints. So I'm going to move those back up so I can at least get my steering back to where it was. Well, I'm pretty much back to where I started, except now I at least have four wheels on this bad boy. I don't know what to do about the steering problems that I'm having, and I don't really have time today to figure it out anymore. I was hoping the holes would work. They made it much worse. I put it back to the original holes and it drives much better now. Um, I can at least steer without like twitching all over the place, but overall pretty disappointed in how this thing drives. Yeah, it's kind of a bummer note to end on. I guess if this is anything, <laughs> any consolation to you guys, like Obviously everything I'm doing, I'm, I'm learning and messing around and playing with stuff. And this is just another example of that. Like, so this has just been a foray in me figuring out how some of this works. And I'm obviously going to be doing a lot more research on this, try and figure out how to make the steering a little bit better. Um, I'm not done with this cart. Obviously I want to do more stuff to it. I want to, uh, I want to replace this whole drive system with an axle. I don't like this chain drive one wheel. I did that because it was cheap and easy, but I'm not a fan of it. Um, the brakes inside of there are very, very bad. The gas pedal and the brake pedal aren't great. Really the only thing that I, I like about this cart as it stands is the frame. I really like this frame, it's good and solid. And the seat, the seat's nice and comfy. I like everything, uh, everything that I did there, but the rest of it, definitely a, a massive learning experience. So. Uh, sorry this video is a little bit more of a bummer, not quite as complete as my normal stuff, but hopefully the next one I have will be a banger. Until then, I hope you guys have a good time watching, and maybe you learned something watching me mess all this up today, but if I earned it, click like and subscribe. Thank you.